So in light of all the laminated kits that have been coming out for uh, all the Game Boys lately, um, I made a decision to uh, revise the slate once again, and uh, well, we're we're going we're going fully laminated, boys. Uh, but anyway, we have two different options as far as lamination goes. So we could go full lamination where the glass is bonded to the panel with um, optically clear adhesive. You can see uh, the, the bezel blends in quite a bit with the um, actual LCD itself because there's such a fine cap. Now, unfortunately, I messed up the lamination on this particular screen, but you can still see the effect while it's off looks pretty good but while it's on it's a little messed up this one which isn't a actual console it's just the faceplate uh, this one is air gapped so this LCD is air gapped to the lens itself uh, it doesn't look as good but that that brings me to our options here I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out it shouldn't be stuck down aside from a little bit of tape holding it in Oh, and apparently some other adhesive somewhere. Oh, there we go. Alright, so that comes out just like that. Easy peasy. No real issues. Um, so you're probably sitting there thinking, oh, well, shoot, what am I going to do if I want a custom lens now? Because the whole point of using the DMG lens shape was that you could just go out and get yourself a custom lens. Um, but that's not, we're, we're not, all hope is not lost. Here's two more lenses or display assemblies as an example. Um, here we go. So we'll take the lens and this is how we can laminate other screens. We will want to remove outer adhesive and the middle jam the lens in to the shell itself now Take our screen, pull off the adhesive, and then just jam that in, and that's it. I don't have to do anything else. Kind of got to drop it in at an angle because of uh, these integrated brackets now, but. That's it done. Got an air gap display, easy peasy. Now the alternative, if we want to use uh, lamination, let me go ahead and grab another lens and let us walk through that. All right, so if we want to use uh, full lamination, we're going to need a few extra supplies, namely a source of UV. You can use one of these uh, flashlights, but note when I did that I got these weird circle artifacts so maybe not the best idea but it does work um, also we'll need loca this is some particularly old Osaka 6 that I had laying around and that could also be related to why I got the uh, circle artifacts so I'm not going to be using either of these I'm gonna play it safe and I'm going to use one of my my nail bed curing station thingies um, we also need the lens and a jig. I went out and bought some brand new loca for this. We've got this sticky icky. But it should be pretty straightforward. We're gonna go through the same process. I need actually before I do that, we're gonna prep the LCD first. Now, one thing I encountered when I did this. Uh, I encountered three separate issues, so we're going to try and correct those three issues. Uh, first issue is the uh, uneven curing, which 
hopefully just by using my nail curing thing and not the flashlight and by using brand new Loka, I don't have that issue. Uh, issue two and issue three are a little bit different. Uh, issue two is I got a little bit of the Loka bled into the LCD itself, which resulted in this kind of wet looking artifact here. And there's absolutely nothing I can do about that. This screen is done for. Uh, the third issue looks like um, might just be more of the same. I got Loka within the diffusion layers of the LCD and it results in these weird streaks. Uh, but that could also be the lens separating. I'm not 100% sure. If it's the lens separating, I still have no idea how to fix that. But if it's just more uh, intrusion, then I've got an idea on that. So. Let's go ahead and get started on prepping this LCD. I don't really know how to avoid it, but my thought process is let's just try taping it off and see what happens. I don't really know how to tape it off around this LCD connector, but we'll figure something out. I'm going to be using Captain Tape here. Pull that off. And let's just get started. I don't know if this is even feasible, let alone a good idea. It should not be visible once the lens is on. Come up, just overlapping just a little bit. Come in and lay that down. And because I don't want to get my fingerprints all over the screen, I'm going to use microfiber cloth to make sure that the tape is actually adhered all the way down. Fold it, fold it over, and that's it. Rinse, repeat three more times. We should be good on the bottom because that is already pretty well sealed. And looking at this LCD, I didn't have any of those problems over here. Well, actually, that's not true. Looks like it soaked in from the corner. Well, either way, it's probably fine. Got to trim it. Maybe I'll just put a little tape down. Can't hurt, can it?
I'll have to get creative around the uh, plug. I don't know what to do about that yet. remember how much we can safely overlap so I'm going for bare minimum And hopefully we just get no intrusion at that corner. Try and be real careful. Give us a quick wipe down, make sure all the tape is pressed down. All right, let's prep the lens now. Save the middle because you never know when you'll need some extra double sided tape. actually be better if these weren't pre-adhesived but as plans change you know stock is what it is <laughs> wipe that off real quick Put some dust on it all right there we go connector in the bottom left now I need a plunger that I've somehow managed to lose. Oh, there it is. And put some of the adhesive down. A little bit goes a long way. It's kind of like uh, thermal paste. And here is where the adhesive on the lens is interfering. So we need to get 
I almost wonder if it might be better to leave the paper on. Because now I can't move this around. Try something else. This isn't working. Ooh, that's stuck. Right. Out comes the jig. Place that in. And we'll just drop the lens on exactly where it needs to go. Yeah, so I think I need a little bit more because not only is it not spreading out all the way to the edges, but you can see it's receding. This is why this is still a process. But the nice thing is, is this technique should be applicable to every single screen if you want to DIY one of these things. Um, and I don't just mean slate, I mean every Game Boy. Tape came up. So this. Oh, no, I'm still good. It came up when I was lifting, but the logo never even made it to the edge. Okay. Put a dot in that corner. That was a huge dot. Dot in that corner. A little bit, mini dot, right there, and there. I guess just a little bit extra, because it's coming out anyway. Extra. Squeeze out the air bubbles. Let's, the adhesive will hold it in place, so we don't really need the jig once it's placed. I'll just squeegee or squeeze out the rest. But this is exactly how I ruined the other LCDs, so... Just keep squeezing, we want to get all of the bubbles out. is very healthy. Especially because 
just all over the LCD now. We're good. I'm going to put this away. And now it is time for the oven. So this here is real cheap, not even plugged in. Let's fix that. This is like 20 bucks from Amazon. It is this Jode Sone brand. Um, and it has a sensor in there, so we just need to plug it in and then basically put something in there, like your hand, and it enables the UV LEDs. So that's what we're gonna do. And highly recommend eye protection. Come on. Not triggering. It's too small. <laughs> All right, fine. 60 second timer. So yeah, highly recommend eye protection. Um, it is just UV, so you're probably fine. It's not like laser radiation. You don't need to worry about it too, too terribly. But. Um, pets you probably don't want looking in there and I mean like I can hold my hand up and I can feel the heat from the uh, UV radiation but we'll just give that 60 seconds and then I'm gonna flip it over and do the back for 60 seconds we shouldn't need to do that, but I know some loca got squeezed out, so I want to make sure all the loca is cured. Alright. I'm going to flip it over. Jam it back in there. Same thing. It's getting hit from pretty much every angle, as long as it's deep enough in there, so... Really not too concerned. This should be a lot better than my flashlight. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this works with the loco. And I mean, it's got like a removable base, and it's it's a two-hand nail thing, so you can fit both your hands side by side. So it's got plenty of room for bigger things, like if I ever want to do a, uh, a tablet or something. Fifteen, fourteen. All right, I suppose I can try popping this one out of here. Because I never actually adhered these LEDs in, or LCDs. I just kind of gently placed them and hoped for the best. So this is that UV damaged LCD. Pop that off. Plug that, pull that out of there. And so yeah, here is the UV thing. So you can see all the LEDs from just about every angle. It's pretty neat for the price. Um, I'm not so sure that I would trust it for like my kids to use in a nail salon or something, but. All right, I don't think this stuff cured based off the stuff that was on the um, outside. I don't know if it needs more time or what, but we can test our results. Drop that in there. 
bada boom. The uh, real test will be if in a few days, if it still looks as good, uh, the problem, however, is that I messed this one up, like usual. Uh, I didn't see all the bubbles, and there's still quite a few bubbles in this one. But that also probably has something to do with the fact that I installed and removed the lens several times. If you do it in one smooth action, it should just work. And yeah, it's definitely cured. Because it's not going anywhere. But there you go. Works nice. Um, oop. I will... I'll throw a link to this stuff, this thing, this uh, UV curing bed, and the uh, loco that I'm using. I'll throw links in the description, um, but keep in mind I am filming this video while my current slate revision is still under an NDA, so this video is probably not going to go up anywhere near when I filmed it. Um, so that fly-by-night Chinese junk that I'm using might not even be listed anymore, but it is what it is. But there you go. That is how we can laminate a IPS kit to the LCD. Um, point of note, it is okay if the LCD overlaps the lens and sticks out on one side, but only one side. Otherwise, you cannot get this in. Um, that or you have to install it from the inside and the lens is literally just there for looks. It's not securing anything. So keep that in mind. Uh, with this particular design, I have had quite a few defects because the LCDs aren't positioned properly and they stick out just a hair in the corner there. And then these whole things don't work because LCD is sticking out. And it's been a real pain in the butt, but we're working on it to get the best quality possible. But anyway, there you go. I hope that helps. I am still really bad at it, but I'm getting better at it with each attempt. Uh, next step is to leave this sit for a few days and see if I messed up and if we get any leakage. Um, but otherwise, there we go. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.